Hey, how's it going? It is all the news. My name is Felix, and I uh, gotta say, I had a great time the other night uh, at the O2 Arena. It was pretty awesome. Hollywood Vampires live review, giant stars descend on London. It was freaking amazing. I've got some photos, got some videos, and there was a live stream that I did, and uh, my phone died, and I had no power even though I put a power bank in the car and I forgot it in the car and Jesus Christ, man, I got to sort myself out. Anyway, uh, yeah, it was really annoying as well. And uh, girlfriend's phone, her phone died as well. Everything died. It was just like, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> it was a disaster. Anyway, uh, let me tell you about it. Far Out, uh, this is the magazine, Far Out magazine. It's saying, Hollywood Vampires live review, giant stars descend on London. And this is from Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Uh, as the sun began to dip, Below the horizon and the 80s approached, <laughs> the Sunset Strip, nestled in the vibrant intersection of Beverly Hills and West Hollywood, became a crucible for what would soon be known as the West Coast Mental Explosion. <laughs> All right, uh, was that a thing? The, this eruption of heavy metal would come to define the Los Angeles music scene for years to come. During this time at 9015 Sunset Boulevard, a bar called the Rainbow Bar and Grill became the meeting place for the newly born Hollywood vampires. This is a weirdly um, incongruous looking place. I'll show you what I mean. So here we are on Sunset Boulevard, West Hollywood, California. And you're thinking to yourself, well, this is the birthplace of the Hollywood vampires. People who wear black and white and uh, walk around calling themselves vampires. And, uh, and they met at this rainbow bar, cafe and grill place. What is this crazy looking thing? No, no. It's some weird looking sort of cottage. Uh, <laughs> look at this thing. What is what? Rainbow Bar and Grill in, in Hollywood. And this is the birthplace of the Hollywood vampires, is it? It looks like uh, a place. Oh, that's me. Looks like a place where you would get um, badly made pizza. In my personal I can't put myself in the right place. It looks, it does look like a place you would get badly made uh, pizza or bar and grill or burgers and such like and so forth. And, uh, it's not its not the birthplace of vampires, is it? Or heavy rock gods. And Alice Cooper and Johnny Page, not Johnny Page, Jimmy Page and uh, Johnny Depp. But there we go. Actually, the pizza looks all right, got to say. Uh, that's acceptable. And uh, <laughs> look at this place. Anyway, uh, that's just my uh, personal opinion. Uh, so it's the... Uh, during this time, a bar called the Rainbow Bar and Grill, which you just saw, became the meeting place for the newly born Hollywood vampires. This assembly, formed and spearheaded by metal veteran Alice Cooper, still can't handle that as a first name for a guy, initially took shape as the celebrity drinking club, boasting iconic figures like Ringo Starr, Mickey DeLenz, Keith Moon, legend, and Harry Nielsen, with the occasional honorary presence of John Lennon, legend, and Keith Emerson. The initiation rite into this exclusive brotherhood required surpassing the drinking stamina of all existing members, Jesus Christ, a feat that would later epitomise the supergroup that Cooper would form in 2012. Today, Hollywood Vampires is still fronted by Alice Cooper, along with his friends Johnny Depp, Joe Perry and Tommy Henriksen, all of which ended their show last night at the London's O2 Arena with tumultuous applause. The, it was pretty awesome, to be honest. I'll show you some pictures and some video of uh, the situation uh, right now. So this is us getting a beer before the gig uh, is kicking off. And uh, we're having a little think about the situation. And now we're at the uh, merchandise store thinking about uh, getting some t-shirts. I was looking at prices and stuff. I ended up with this this one over here. Um, which I don't think you can see. Not this one over there. Those 40s. The ones with the lips I thought were quite good. The teeth. Um, the skull was good. This one here, Hollywood Vampires with the skull with the crossed arms, £50 long sleeve t-shirt, ended up with that one. £50 is about $60. £40 is about $50. So they're not cheap. I think you can only get them uh, at the actual gig. You can't get them on the website. Um, some you can, that one you can. And this one, uh, one with the teeth you can. And the one with the, the uh, coffin you can as well. But the rest you've got to get at the actual venue and this is me wandering around and I was uh, this is about an hour to go before the gig was going to kick off and you can see everyone's got t-shirts on and uh, this is us going into the actual arena at the O2 arena itself and we're going through the door 
and this is the first time I see the actual venue and I'm like Ooh, holy moly this place is massive stage is down there on the right and the place is filling up still about an hour to go and when the time actually kicked off it was ram packed to people absolutely rammed and the rest of it I shot on live stream a lot of people were looking at it on live stream and uh, that was quite difficult to do because I was getting thrown around by people jostled by people people going up and down the stairs and it was really hard to film and then my phone died and then connection I got lost connection at loads of, oh man it was hard super hard I thought I was going to get um, told not to film it was it was a right drama super drama uh, <laughs> but anyway uh, we sort of achieved something if you want to have a look there's loads of the live streams on the channel have a little look the last one is probably the best um, have a little look at that and uh, yeah it was it was a mad mad event absolutely worth it uh, they're in Birmingham are they in Birmingham today we'll have a look at that in a second uh, what else is going on in this article the journey from North Greenwich station to the interest of the o entrance of the O2 transforms into hordes of devoted metal fans on stage, a tapestry of musical favourites awaits within the band's own repertoire. God, there's some words going on here. From the youthful rebellion of Cooper's I'm 18 and the exuberance of Aerosmith's Walk This Way, Walk This Way, to the charged energy of vampires, my dear drunk friends, I like that one, and as bad as I am, that's the t-shirt I've got. Um, amid the musical ruckus, she likes long words. Who is this person? Kelly. I'm saying Kelly likes long words. Uh, <laughs> amid the musical ruckus, the covers undeniably ignited the greatest fervour among the crowd. The air crackled as the band unleashed the heart-pumping intensity of ACDC's Jack, while the rendition of the Who's timeless classic, Bubba O'Reilly, saw Cooper's vocals matching the power of his prime. He breathed life into the words once sung by Pete Townsend. Uh, this is a little gig uh, video down here. During the second half of the set, the band performed a heartfelt rendition of David Bowie's Heroes. We can be heroes. The crowd's emotion could be felt as Johnny tackled lead vocals, gazing back towards a sea of glistening eyes. Uh, Depp has performed this song many times, uh, but the privilege of experiencing it live becomes akin to a profound glimpse into the band's very essence. It was pretty amazing, I've got to say. It was much, it was, I thought it was going to be good, and it was better than I thought. It was like bigger, and more powerful, and more extreme, and, and being there in the presence of the noise, the sheer sort of uh, volume which like hits you, uh, every time the, the drum bass hits you, it's like physical force, and you feel these shock waves going through you. It's amazing, amazing thing to be involved with or to go and see. Um, at the set, as the set nears its end, Ronnie Woods, yeah, he was there from the Stones, joined the men on stage for an emotional tribute to the late Jeff Beck. Images of Beck flashed on the screen, and he played a few songs. There's only one song in the encore, and that's the classic, the legendary school's out for summer, and that's all that's needed because what's better what better way to go out to signpost the conclusion of a love letter to living and dead legends than with Cooper Schools out forever? That was awesome. Uh, Hollywood Vampires is an entity meant to be experienced live. I think it is, yeah. I think it really uh, demonstrates what they can do when they've got a gigantic uh, 20,000 people. Uh, that's what they need. They need the size and scale. But the power of the noise was phenomenal. Uh, it beckons for personal immersion and the reward lies not just in momentary thrill but in the lasting rekindling of a connection with songs once cherished by the greats from the moments the arena lights rise. God, this person writes in a really weird, weird way, but it's quite good. Um, yeah, it was pretty awesome, got to say. Pretty awesome place to be. Have a look at the live stream uh, that I did. Obviously, all the live stream got immediately demonetized for copyright, and that's fair enough. <laughs> to be honest, uh, but I, I want to leave it there because it was just awesome. And uh, yeah, have a little look. Uh, what else was going on? Because that was just fantastic. They were great. Hollywood Vampires tour to a day. Is it today? Yes, are in Birmingham. So get yourself down to Birmingham if you're anywhere near Birmingham. Utilita, Utilita Arena. Uh, tickets might be available. Let's have a look, see if we can buy some tickets. Oh, look, my stuff is in the way again. Can I get some tickets? Uh, can I go to Birmingham right now? What is this? Over to Scarborough, Swansea, Manchester, O2. Oh, that's not looking good. Um, so no. <laughs> Scarborough, Swansea, Manchester, O2. No tickets. Uh, so if you're, if you're looking for tickets, um, well, it sucks to be you. Um, because there are none. <laughs> so what else is occurring? Let's have a little look at the tour. The tour, I think there's only something like uh, 13 odd days left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven days left. Uh, the next Birmingham, then Glasgow, Stuttgart, 
Bruno, Czech Republic, Budapest, love Budapest, um, Slovakia, <laughs> uh, Poland, Wolfsburg in Germany, Boston, Massachusetts, Manchester, New Hampshire, and of course, the finishing finale, the crescendo, the apothegy, the nadir, the Alfred Amiga, Bethel Woods Center for the Arts in Bethel, New York, is going to be the end of the tour, and that's going to be, frankly, uh, astounding. Uh, can you get tickets for that? If you are of the New York persuasion, let's have a little look. What you need to know, don't know. Um, there's the stage. Blue means there are tickets available. Fun Wine Lawn. There's some words I don't usually hear in one sentence. Um, but it's a fun... You can get tickets. Get yourself down there. And how much is that going to cost you? Um, $86. $86. Very reasonable. Very reasonable. $86. Boom. Gets you in there. Um... There might be some available later, closer to the day, but uh, don't count on it. Some box box tickets. No, they're disabled. What else have we got over here? Um, how much? How much is the fun line wine lawn? Fun wine lawn. Um, zoom, 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 zoom. Okay, there's no tickets. It's stand. Must be a standing sort of thing. Okay, I, I get I get what's going on there. All right, maybe lawn Ada. Can you get tickets for that? No, same principle. So you can get yourself to down there. It's going to be 173. Or am I just, yeah, I keep adding more on to there. $86. They're not serious uh, prices. So uh, if you are in New York and uh, you fancy this, and you should, because it's going to be freaking awesome, get yourself down there. It's going to be pretty amazing. So that's in Bethel, New York, and that's the uh, tickets. At the actual gig was another person. We knew Ronnie Woods uh, was turning up, but also a woman turned up who had not I'd not seen before. Imelda May. Uh, this is Imelda May's website. She sang and she was really good. And I was, I was thinking, who is this woman? So I had to look her up. This is her website. And uh, I was thinking, who is this? Is she like uh, a rock star from uh, ages gone by? What is this? But then I looked over here and it says um, Imelda May and Noel Gallagher uh, featuring Ronnie Woods. This is a track from one of her songs. So she seems to be connected to Ronnie Wood, and that's maybe why she was on stage. But if you know more about her, please let me know, because I don't know who she is, Emilda May. I, I listened to one of these, can't play it because of copyright issues, but I listened to one and she's really good, uh, but I don't know who she is. So if you do know, let me know in the comments, that'd be fantastic. And uh, that's about everything I was, I was thinking about today on, on the Johnny Depp uh, Hollywood Vampires line. So uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts. And did you uh, have you got yourself tickets? Are you going to get yourself down there? And uh, if not, why not? Have a little word with yourself. And uh, I will talk to you guys later on.